Okay, let's start. Today we are very happy to have a Yuan Chen from Caltech and Google. Uh, his talk is about exact automation in all dimensions and the development between fermionic SPT and bosonic hyperbolic SPT. So let's welcome Yuan. Thanks for the introduction. So today my talk is based on my first three paper with my advisor and one audience here, George, and my recent paper with the other audience, then here and Ellison. So the first three is about optimization. So by optimization, we mean the mapping from the fermionic upgrade to poly matrix. So we will show that as a, this is the outline of my talk. So first, I will review the 1D optimization, which is the Jordan Wigner transformation, which is a duality between any fermion chain and spin chain. And then I will review the D2K theory and how we use this D2K theory to bottomize any Hamiltonian, any fermionic Hamiltonian in the two dimension. And then we will show this connection to the error correcting code in the quantum computation. And then we will move to the space time picture. So after the phase interval, we can show that our optimization is equivalent to the so called chain Simon term in 2 plus 1 d and so called steam rose square term in higher dimension. So we can generalize the mapping from 2D to up 3 dimension. And finally, we will use all this technique to construct various either bosonic or fermionic SPD phase, a symmetry for daily topological phase, and also with scale boundary. So let's warm up in the 1D system. So consider we compare two kinds of system. The first one is spin chain, and the second one is the fermion chain. So the Hilbert space is look, uh, look like the same. For each side, there's a spin up, spin down. And for fermion, there's unoccupied or occupied. And the uh, uh, physical uh, observable on spin chain in general, generated by the poly matrix, we call it X, Y, Z here, is generated by the fermion operator C and C tagging here. And here we consider the, the only local Hamiltonian. So the all local Hamiltonian will be due to the all local fermion Hamiltonian. And the symmetry, the fermion is a D2 symmetry. Uh, Transformer parity, and for spin side, we require this total dimension. So, the chosen wheel transformation will give the duality between these two systems. So, the formula is following. So, first, we map the creation and an annihilation upgrade to the loading and the racing upgrades. So, in each side, they look like the same, but to make sure the bosonic upgrade have the anti computing on a different side, we need to introduce this so called string upgrade. A part of the D, if found the And to make this formula become easier, we consider the only physical observable. We change it into the background basis. So we change the C and C dagger in terms of the gamma and gamma prime. And the, the all algebra of a fermion is generated by these two kind of operators. So the first one is the outside fermion parity. So this PJ tell you at side J. The fermion is occupied or unoccupied. The second test is for fermion copy. So you have the fermion at the side J to the side J plus one. So you it, it have from gamma to gamma prime. You have the two species of fermion. So any fermion operate can be written in terms of a product of these two kinds of operate. So we only need to know how do we map these two operates into a, a poly matrix. So although the formula here is quite nice easy to see. But in terms of these spaces, the formula is very easy. So the outside parity, the number of fermions correspond to the DJ, the power DJ matrix on the side J. And the Hamilton, just simply the product of XJ and XJ plus one. So we can check that uh, this Hamilton will enter commute with the two fermion parity near, near uh, like at the end of this Hamilton. So we can check the X and that commute with so the commutation relation is preserved under this mapping. And the fermion parity is mapped to the total symmetry, D2 symmetry in the spin chain. So, so, actually, it's a very naive question. If there are some like a uh, local Hamiltonian term in the bo bosonic model yeah. in the spin chain, does it necessarily map, map to a local interaction term in the fermion chain? Yes, it's correct because on the 1D chain, there's a two string upgrade that will catch yeah, up. Okay. Yeah. But, you but, does it, but is it always true? Uh, yes, in 1D. But it's not true in 2D. I will show that why it's not true. 
So if we want to apply the Jordan window in the 2D system, so naively we just arrange the 2D array with some label, for example, 1, 2, 16, and we just define a Jordan window transaction on this, on this one bit chain. So however, if we, if we look at some hopping, for example, hopping between style 2 and style 7, according to the Jordan window transaction, there's a string upright, like a D upright along its, its line. So originally it's a local Hamiltonian, and then it will make to some non-local term, which is proportional to the length of the system time. So which will increase the cost in the quantum simulation. So we want to avoid this non-locality. We want to principle locality. Actually, sorry, can you go one slide again? So uh, the locality symmetry maps to uh, Z. So the, the idea is like we know the Huffington anti commute the Fermion parity. We just need to construct something anti commute D. The simple choice is X. So we just choose the Huffington to be X times X. And so here's the, uh, the main result of this talk. So we have shown that in the 2D, we can construct the isomorphism between a Fermion algebra and the, the Z2 gauge theory with a modified uh, gauge complex. So I will go into the detail later. So there's some nice property of this construction. The first one is it preserves it preserve the locality. The second one is that when we try to define a map to be self consistent we need to introduce a data called spin structure. So usually when we encounter spin structure, we try to define a spinner on some continuous Riemannian beta flow. So for example, there's a SL3 symmetry. We need to define a spinner bundle to lead to SU2. So in, in our case, we're, we're working on the latest Hamiltonian, and we we'll work on a spin-based fermion. But however, in this case, it's still near spin structure. So it's quite remarkable. And the second, we can do the passenger work on our presentation. And it turns out to be exactly the transaction term appearing in the action. And then, we show that our formula is straightforward, so we can generalize to ultra dimension very, very easily. Sorry, in 2D? Uh, 2D, uh, 2 plus 1D is transignment, and the higher dimension will become a spinner or square. So you support the map in 2D? Uh, yes. <coughs> yeah. So on a 2D spatial lattice, we do a passenger board, it becomes a 3D space time, uh, space time item. And we can define transignment time in this space time item. And uh, this will be kind of clear later. I will explain how we get it. Sorry, one question. So suppose I have a fermion SPT space in two dimensions, one plus one D. Yep. That's a KitKat chain. So it's a fermion model yes. and with fermion parity symmetry. Yep. And what does it map to in this bosonized map? Uh, so in this case, it's one D, you just apply to them with that. So the KitKat chain will become a transverse field IC model. Okay. Yeah. But then there is also uh, analogs, fermion parity symmetry in the boson bosonized. Yes, it's just a D2 symmetry. You flip the O spin from up to down. Okay. So so uh, uh, so mathematically they are equivalent, but on the physical side they are not equivalent because on the bosonic side we can always apply some mechanical to break the D2 symmetry. But on the fermion chain there's no way to break the fermion symmetry. So now let's review what's the, so what's the D2 gate theory. So when we say D2 gate theory, we first we put a degree of freedom on the edge. So for example, we put each qubit on the edge, so it's generated by the X, Y, Z polymetries. And then we add the edge constraint on the Hilbert space, which means the only allowed state is satisfied this constraint at GB equal to 1 when we apply on state. At least GB, they need to commute with each other. So the standard choice is that we consider this upgrade. Consider a poly x part, an x upgrade around an edge of a vertex. So we require the product equal to 1. So this is uh, similar to the so called Gauss law in DMN. So there's no charge excitation at vertex speed. So now if we study plus the gauge invariant, gauge invariant upgrade on the list, uh, get that. The first one is just x, because we know uh, x commutes to x. The second one is the product of c around any closed loop. 
because we know any closed loop will intersect with this operate by two edges, and then the two minus sign cancel out. So these two operates are the only two gauge variant operates. And it turns out to be this D2 gauge theory can be mapped to a spin model by this way. So our spin model, we define our spin on phase. So this x become part of x on this two phase, then part of d become a d on this phase. <coughs> so we can check the commutation relation. For, for example, on the left side, this x will end up commute with d. So when you commute that, you will find the stuff. On the right hand side, this x here will end up commute with this z here. So they also give a minus sign. So this mapping is the duality between these two spaces. And this is so called a Kramer's gradient duality. Then we can check the Hilbert space dimension and they are the same. So on the left hand side is the gauge theory. It's the, and on the right hand side is just spin theory without any content. And then we are going to generalize this map to become the Z2 gauge theory map to some fermion model. So this is the setting of uh, our model. We first create, uh, put the fermion on each phase. So in each phase, A, B, C, D, we put the C and C data. Or in, in background fermion, we put the gamma and gamma prime at each phase. And there are two types of operators. The first one is the outside fermion parity, and the second one is the halving time. So the outside fermion parity is a gamma F times gamma F prime at some phase, which tell you it's unoccupied or occupied. The fermion halving is you move the fermion from one, from one phase to another phase. So these two operate generate the whole fermion algebra. And our goal is to find some polymetric equation such that we can rewrite the P and S instead of some polymetric such that the computational relationships are preserved. So here's our choice. So, uh, so for the fermion parity here, we meant to the so-called flux operate, just like Torico, a product of the D around the phase. But for the halving term, it's a little non-trivial. It's defined this way. So the UE operate, if, uh, is, is along its vertical edge, is phi A, we define to be the X operate on this edge, and D operate on the horizontal edges. And if the halving is across the horizontal edge, that phi 6, it's an X edge here, times D edge here. So at, at the first point, we may want to apply, do, do we need to define this kind of weird hacking in terms of A and D? The reason is because the fermionic hacking, sometimes uh, you hop from here to here and go from the other place, is to have younger, they don't come in. So sometimes they attack come in. So we need to use the X and D to... Uh, sorry. So E is the edge? Yeah, E is the edge. But, but what is left of... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's right of edge for the fermion yeah. lives at the edge, right? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, the fermion lives at the face. So let me go back. So the fermion is at the face. Oh, so awesome. the hopping is across the edges. So the L and R means the face left to the oh. edge and right to the edge. So for example, on this edge, the hopping is between A and B, like from gamma A to gamma prime B. Should be that. That's all right. Yeah. So by defining this kind of real operate, we can check if the attack comes. So for example, the fermion hopping around the phi A from phase D to phase C, so gamma D to gamma prime C. The same thing we can define the fermion hopping along this edge for phi into this operate. And we, we can check these two operate, the attack commute, because they share the common linear from fermion operate at gamma D. So they keep that minus sign. And then we can check out the definition of photonic hopping. So on this phi is x and d here. On this edge, 4 phi is x and d here. Because this d and this x, they end up commute. So this, this will be the minus sign here. So we can check that once we define this operate, the commutation relationship, uh, relationship are preserved on this mapping. But however, this is not the end of story. It turns out to be these two operate, they are not quite independent. The reason is because when we try to move a fermion around a circle, like a part of the hopping around the edges, it turns out to be the equal to this value, because by the property of the Mandarin fermion is one. So this means on the fermionic side, this operate 
they have some identity they need to satisfy. But if we just apply the mapping here, this upgrade will map to some for some polymetrics. But these polymetrics they don't guarantee to be one. So we need to import this page content. So this we call it to be prime and then we require on the D2 side they need to satisfy this content. So it's so it is a D2 gauge theory. So we can visualize this gauge content. So this content two parts. The first one is the Z part. The Z part is the part of the Z around the face here. And then the, the X part is the part of X around its uh, star time. Yeah. So this is our gauge content. It's different from the usual one. The usual one doesn't contain the, the Z part. So we can compare the, our mapping with the well-known permanent weighting theory. So in this case, the left hand side is the gauge theory. So we change the gauge function. So originally the gauge function is this, and we change it to this x times z. So, uh, so according to this gauge function, the habitat is modified accordingly. So our habitat is different from there. So on the right hand side, there's this gauge theory matched to the spin model. And on our model, the twisted, like the modified little gauge theory will become a fragmented theory. It will map to the fragmented operator. So we may want to find way to define this kind of x times z operate, but it, it has a very uh, nice interpretation by a protocol. The by a protocol is two types of particle. The first one is E particle, and the second one is M particle. And if we combine them, it becomes a become fermion. So when we apply the x particle, uh, sorry, the x operate here, this will move the M particle from this phase to the right phase. If we apply the E parameter here, this will move the chart from the vertex 4 to the vertex 5. So which means when we apply the x times z, this effectively move the, uh, move the fermion epsilon from this phase to the right phase. So intrinsically, intrinsically from the protocol, we know this happening have some fermion property because we move the emergent fermion in the protocol. So that's why we define this happening will have the same statistic with the fermion happening. And the gauge constraint can be interpreted as the, the E and N can, all, can only uh, appear at the same time. So there's no exaggeration because if it's the plus one, plus one, or minus one, minus one, there's only two possibilities for this gauge constraint. And so the next question is like, can we really apply this maybe on a quantum computer? Or just so if I want to simulate some fermion Hamiltonian or fermion model? Is it an efficient algorithm to encode fermion into uh, onto some QB system? It turns out to be uh, yes and no. So no, because this uh, hopping uh, requires two polymetries, which means the code distance is two. So when we draft a code is good enough, we want to make sure the code distance is large enough such that we can perform error correction. So the idea is this. So we add some gate function to help a space. So such that these states are separated. If we want to go from one state to another state, you will need to apply a, 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 some number of polymetries. So in this case, you apply the number of two, so x times z here, you arise from a state fermion on the right to another state fermion on the, on the, uh, from the left to the right. So which is not so good because we want the decode distance to be at least three, so we can correct one single QB error. And now we are going to discuss how do we increase the code distance. No, but why, why do you discuss code error part? So here you want to simulate fermion models using quantum yeah. computer, so, right? Yeah, so for example, I'll make it here. Uh, so any fermion model can be mapped with some polymetric. Yeah, 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 but... And I want to use this on quantum computer, to, for example, Google's device, to check if we can simulate the fermion nicely. Okay. But then why, why, why do you care much about error? I mean, I mean, but at the quantum computer level, level, you you want to map that theory to the ZTK theory on a logical qubit qubit level. If if you do it, you don't. Uh, I don't know why like code distance for the fermionic. Uh, so, matters. Yeah, uh, so this is it's kind of it's called stabilized code. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So if we unleash, so there are two parts. We have to cube it, and we want to import program in the cube. Yes. So of course you can apply some self error correcting code on cube level, so you have a robust cube. Yes. But our benefit is that when we apply the encoding, there's when you import a fermion into a cube, it automatically have some error correcting property. So you don't need to worry about your cube error correcting. Yeah. So it's like you can combine error correction and combine the encoding from fermion to cube, the both computer at the same time. Yeah. But I think, I don't know, I believe if I want to simulate fermionic model using quantum computer, I would already use robust qubits at the quantum um, computer level and implement fermionic model. Yeah, yeah but at, at this stage, there's no fault tolerant error from yes, yes. quantum computer at all. So yeah. there's a full try okay. on the current device. Yeah. Sorry? So I know much less about quantum computing, but isn't there another issue which is that uh, the bosonic side will have, you know, 12, 12 uh, qubit or, or or something like operators, like uh, the the like some bilinears of fermions may have many and like many spins that they need to to combine and that's difficult. Uh, yeah. So in this case, if we consider some Hamilton, some Hamilton will uh, will have content. Uh, seven polymetric instances. Yeah. yeah, of course it's a little hard to operate, but this, you can use some ancilla. So you have some ancilla, you add uh, this seven qubit value to one ancilla, and you can measure this ancilla. ancilla. So although this process is not protected by some error, but it's still doable in a small case. Yeah. So I I would say in some low system size, maybe five by five, uh, if you want to simulate Arbonado, this should be some useful procedure. Yeah. Okay, so let's just quickly mention the, the trick to increase the code distance. So when we first define our organization, we only use the property like X and Z, the entire commute. So we just choose the polymetry X and Z. But it turns out to be we can conduct another operator for X children and Z children. They also satisfy the same computation relation. So for example, I Extend the x operate in this in this way. So we can check these two operates that still commute, commute with each other because the x and the z and x they will give you minus one to the twice in the plus sign. So this x shoulder and z shoulder in this definition will have the same computation like this. And we just use this x shoulder and z shoulder plug back into our uh, format before. So in this case, the hopping will be contain three poly matrix. So in previous case, the half is only two poly matrix, it's a code distance two. In this case, we play this trick, and the half in become a three matrix, and then the code distance is three. So in this case, when we encode fermion into a qubit, the all one qubit error can be corrected in this way. Then we can go reversibly, so we can define more complicated operate, and we write some program to check so in this definition, the code distance is greater than five, so which means by this design, uh, this uh, coding can correct all two QB errors. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean by all and QB error? Oh, uh, you, uh, you mean, yeah. uh, so, so this, yeah, this means when two errors happen at the same time, we are still able to correct at least two errors to make the state go back to a, a correct state. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm confused. What is the what is the Gauss constraint that uh, corresponds to these operators? So the Gauss constraint is it's still, still the x times z, but you need to like substitute the x and z operate by this new x and z. So you will become a very huge operate. But can you still decompose it as star term and plug in term? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So do you know can you draw what it's going to look like? Uh, Yes, yeah. So, but it, it will become very complicated. For example, Good. I, mean, yeah. that's, I can't visualize it, that's why I'm asking. Uh, I, I can do it later, but it's not a part of my code, it's just some side project I did in Google. But, sorry, but all in QBs errors means that, uh, you say, simultaneously it's N? Uh, 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 yes. What so, else, but what does it mean? Is there location uh, dependent? Or uh, no, so for example, you have some state side. 
and so, uh, have some process, you, you, you get a side plan. If the side plan is different from side by only two qubit, we are able to go back from side plan to the side. So this means we are able to correct two qubit. So it's like two qubits can be can be very far away. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the why is the relative to code is too Oh, because of the code details, it's number of polymetries, you go from one, so that's what the side one and side two. Uh, you need to apply uh, five steps, like uh, step one, two, three, four, five. But the number of steps does it depend on? It's the number of steps. Number of steps, sorry. Yeah. Depend, does the number of steps depend on? The problem. So, the so in each step, you apply one QB upgrade. So if you only apply two QB upgrade, you can only go from this state to this point, the state go here, and we can judge, oh, this state is close to side one and it's far away from side two. So this state must belong to the side one originally, and we can go back to side one. So we, can, we need to make sure the code distance is large enough, so such that the QB have some error, like applying on state, we are able to go back to the the previous state. So this is called the uh, error correction. Yeah. So it's the idea that we separate the help space into some far away region. And if you accidentally jump out away the correct region, we can say, oh, you are close to this island, I can move you back. Yeah. So we want to keep this island far away. Yeah. So this is the code distance. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, this doesn't screw up locality. Oh, okay. oh. Yeah, if you go to larger and larger enough, yeah. for example, if you want to go the error correcting to all n cubic, the radius of your operand will be, will go the square root of n. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then, so, so that's the personalization will break, presumably. Yeah, because we still keep the unfinite. So for example, in principle, yeah. like the, you can correct two cubic, it's good enough. Yeah. Because so far, the success rate of the Okay, it's like 99.9%. 99 .9%. If you change the correct to Q to B, you will become a 49, like 99.99%. 99 .99 yeah. How do you define the, the relation of the, the error? Oh, so the, 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 so, the, so the coordinate is D, and you can correct that D minus 1 divided by 2 error. Oh, oh, what? Point. Oh, so it's a so well known, but I don't know. Uh, uh, because if, for example, the coordinates is D, and the uh, so is 5 here, and now if I have to apply the three, three single power to it, I, see, I, see. I can go to 1, okay. 2, 3. No, no, I understand. And at this point, I don't know which day I should go. Yeah. Okay, so now, so far we talked about only about uh, square edges, and now we want to move to some triangulation. But due to the time limits, I won't go into the mathematical detail. The key message is that uh, we can use the so-called car product in algebraic logic to capture the anti-commutation of fermion. So uh, let me try to jump to some program so here. So, so when we consider the, the, the anti-commutation of uh, this Fermion halving upgrade. We call it sine s. And we can show that this s can be impressed by the sine uh, of this car product. So, which means we can use this car product formula to capture the anomaly of the fermion. The, the fermion sometimes, sometimes commute and sometimes anti commute. And it's, it's captured, captured by this quantity. What is E1? Uh, so, uh, so, okay, I can try to explain. So, E1 is the one quotient such that you have the value 1 at this edge E1. So for example, uh, so here's the E1. Yeah. So the one coefficient you assign 1 and 0 on the on edge. So I assign value 1 here and 0 elsewhere. Sure. Yeah, so this is the coefficient E1. And we can define a car product. E2 is uh, another edge. Okay. So we, if we consider the halving of the E1 and E2 here, so E2 has a value 1 here. Yeah. So we need to consider like, their error and their configuration to design their plus sign or minus sign here. Yeah. So it turns out to be the halving that give a plus or minus sign depends on the car part of E1 and E2. Yeah. 
really have some numerical calculator, this half thing will affect you. So you can take it as a definition. What yeah. does it by integrating E1 to Oh, so it's like, uh, because E1 comes E2. It's a two, two cool chain. Yeah. Two cool chain. So now, so it's yeah. like, have a value in the one or zero in the face? Yeah, and I sum summing over all face. So this, uh, what I define it to be the integral of E1. So, I'm sorry, just what, what would be E1, E2? So it's one at. Okay, so, so for example, I draw a comparison. It's E1 and E2. So the first one is the integral of E1. So in this, in this case, the E1 cover E2 will become trivial. Okay. And so it, this means this two halving will have an anti generation So that value will be one on that face. Yeah, yes. But for all the other faces, it will it's be zero. zero. Yeah. So sim I, I see. So it so simply counts whether there is a face that contains both edges. Uh, it has the same direction. So if, if you place a compare some face, like E1, and E2, they connect to each other, and there's some face company, so this will give a minus sign. Yeah. E1, E2 are just the operator to the values. Uh, kind of. We, we, don't go, we don't go through the dual edges. We're still working on the edges, which is defined. Because E1 is kind of dual to some uh, caution. Yeah. It's not going to so you say, you say E1 is like hopping from one face to the other yes. face, right? And E2 is also. So E1 then why, why does orientation matter? Because if, if if there's a this fermion bilinear with like, oh. and if there's a like the fermion sharing the term at the face, then I, I think I feel like the yeah, orientation uh, should not matter. Yeah, because we define a gamma half to the gamma prime. So like gamma to gamma prime and gamma to oh. gamma prime. So it's two gamma the anti Like a oh. super magnet anti -com. However, if you come to another direction, it becomes gamma to gamma prime. Ah, I see, so I see. Oh, because it's not a complex, it's because it's a minor for me. Yeah. Thank you. So it's a little tricky here. Why do you propose E1 copy 2 plus E3 copy 1? Uh, because we want, they, they can extend the direction. Yeah. So computation relation shouldn't depend on the order of E1 and E2, but the car point has depends on E1 and E2. So we need to use this time to redefine the, the matrix correct. And we can simply define some sort of boundary operator. So you can just take a given sum, differential operator in a different form. Yeah. So there's a very nice program and the last way goes to zero. And there's some issues with people low, like the like differential and the wage product. So it turns out to be we can summarize the fermion algebra on the two directives by this by this, uh, this five different rows. So the first one, the hopping and the parity, that's equal to one, of course. And the parity that commute with each other. And the uh, parity only anti commute with the hopping, such that the hopping touch the face. And the, the, this is the most difficult part when we try to check the transition of the hopping. This will be the this top line. And then the final one is the identity. So when we have a fermion around some vertex, we go back to one. Uh, but in, in this case, we're going to go back to some plus one minus one, then some data called W2. So here, W2 is the latest uh, representation of uh, second people we think this. So this will arise some speed structure in there. So our goal is, for them is to try to write down some polymetrics which has the same computation with the organic hopping. So the most easy choice is here. So for the organic hopping and FED, we first define the XE as a part of a polymetrics E prime according to the top part of E prime. Just to make sure that I understood. So you said if E1 and E2 are at share, uh, the, it's a phase share with those two edges containing those touches and E1 copy to the integral expression should be one, right? 
but then e2 and e1 should be also 1. Should be 0. Because the car product depends on the direction. So, so the car product is the 0, 1 times 1, 1, 2. If you rearrange these two edges, this will become 0. Yeah. So, let's, let's do some small detail. So, okay. the car product depends on orientation of the edges. But when I consider the computation of these two stuff. No, but there you said like U copy two plus E two copy E one is like Oh I see I see. Okay, okay, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it turns out that we can use this car structure to to make sure both something copy have the similar computation relationship. So here's an example, but so the message is that it's like that we can map the S from your hobby and from your charity to some for something parking and some for something in the flux upgrade. So it looks like here. So on the premium side, we have the parity, we have the hobby, and we have this identity. So the parity will map to the flux upgrade. And this primary hobby will map to the for something hobby formula and this fermion identity will map to the co-page function as before. So we can generalize the setting in the square disk to upgrade translation translation on the 2D spatial manifold. Yeah. It's gamma up around uh, sorry? It's gamma positive. Yes, yeah, okay. Gamma up. So in each phase there's C dagger and C which can form a two manner upgrade to gamma and gamma prime. Yeah. The reason why we use gamma prime is because we the polymetry square to square to one. So we want to write some operate, the fermion operate which is square to one. Yeah. Yeah. So so far we only work on the special edges and we showed any fermion operate can be meant to the polymetry. And now now we are moved on to the space time feature. So for example So the problem is whatever the second class class. Oh yeah, so, so here the uh, uh, yeah, it's a equivalent function. So the identity of this uh, here depends on the default waiting waiting case and some vertex. So we need to make sure the hopping is had a kind of correct sign. For example, we because we, we only prove the like UE for something hopping and from your hopping SE has the same computation relationship. But we can choose the plus or minus sign by our by the, if we like, so because of the plus minus side doesn't change the computation. So in this case, we need to show us uh, some spin structure, like the like how to e equal to w two on this half on the side in front of this half. So with this choice, this this will cancel out with this w two. So on the bosonic side, there's no sign issue. Otherwise, this identity will measure the gb equal to plus one or minus one, depends on the choice of your this sign here. So the sign here is, is important. So you can think of like this sign will cancel out with this sign. So if you don't have a spin structure, then you cannot have Yeah, so on a digital gauge theory side, you will not be self-consistent. So in, in that case, your gauge constraint sometimes equal to one, sometimes equal to minus one. Yeah. So maybe I should stay uh, another way. So. I start with some use case theory, and I require to be equal to one always. So in this case, if I want to write some programmatic theory without any sign issue, we should choose the sign at least two parts. Yeah. But if you have a spin structure, can you just decide to choose a different constraint on the digital base theory, then do you still have a consistent yeah, yeah, so so it's, it's, it's not unique, it's arbitrary, so you can choose any spin structure. Yeah. Oh, so, sorry, I'm saying if you don't have a spin structure. Yeah, so you, so if, you don't, you, if you don't have a spin structure, you need to do some plus minus sign here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is that a problem? Uh, yeah, 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 it's, it's still consistent, but it's just on um, for some side, it's kind of very, a bit more ugly here. Yeah. I mean, in higher dimensions, you can actually have an inconsistency, right? You can have a lattice which does not admit spin structures at all. Yeah. And then, then it will be a problem. In yeah, 2 yeah. plus 1D, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
which one you got left hand side to Z and gave you theory? On the right hand side, you get something like Carol from Yeah, that's a good question. I want to try something like this, but uh, so I think that George has a lot of question. If you change the left hand side to Z and gave you theory, that's oh. Z to the ZN, so I'm right hand yeah. side. From yeah, I, to I, I get that. Yeah, so I, George has a paper on the so called uh, spin structure and low, in low dimension. So they can please conduct some parallel spin structure. But it's only true in 1 plus 1D, right? Or 2 plus 1? No, everything you said works in all dimensions. Okay. Like everything generalizes that you say now to the end. Okay, I see. It's, uh, it's just not guaranteed to have any relativistic limits. It's going to violate spin statistics in higher dimensions. But, you know, you may or may not care about that. If you want to describe any ions, you don't care. So that's fine. So now let's uh, move to the like, DM feature. So let's uh, warm up in the standard gauge theory. So consider a theory which has this gauge function. So the most general term you can write down is uh, x times uh, x when it's another term is some flux. So this is proposed by Kofu uh, in early 1980s. So we can use the transfer matrix to define a partition function. This is to be exponential minus beta x. And uh, this is the Hamiltonian. And this action can be calculated uh, exactly by transfer metric. So it turns out to be this standard little game theory to work for the 3D IT model. Uh, so here we use a uh, slightly more mathematical notation. So the notation here basically just means the part of the IC on HE around a base. So this is a 3D IC game theory. And this is a well known result in 50, 50 years ago. So now let's try to modify this center gauge uh, theory. So first, we train to the gauge function. So initially, the gauge function looks like here, and we train to the gauge function with this extra product D here. And because we train the gauge function, we need to modify the halving term. So the halving term originally is Xe, we train to our halving Ue. So we want to see once we substitute, what's the result of the inner action. So it turns out to be we can still use the transfer matrix and we can calculate the action exactly. It turns out to be in the 3 plus 1D, this piece is the same as the previous one, is the ICK theory. And this extra D here will give you another factor, so it's just like a, a cup to the A. So this is the discrete transition action. And on the other hand, we know this digital case theory can be made to some premium Hamiltonian. Which is a free fermion. So we can draw a free fermion model, which has exactly similar, it has exactly the action. The 3D icing plus the transition. So we want to conclude that this is a, a very similar to the so-called particle force event. So you have some scalar field and you also some flux and adding the transition term on, on this dynamic field to A, and it becomes some uh, fermion uh, theory. Yeah. Uh, why is it scalar plus flux? I mean, why is it flux? Because originally, uh, so this means we the particle is part of x around a vertex, and here we turn the part of d here. Yeah. So that x is a chart in a particle, and z is a flux in a particle. So this very complex, which means we combine the charge to the flux. So this argument is similar to a flux attachment. So it's yeah, it's just uh, uh, it analogous to the base components limit. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. So, how fair is it to call that the Trent Simons term? Because uh, it presumably does not have any chirality about it. Uh, I see. You know, would it have an anomaly inflow onto a boundary? But I think the issue only arises when we try to describe the U1 transaction on the basis, right? So I think that we are here, we are doing C2 field, and I think, uh, as, a, as my knowledge, I think this term is totally well defined, there's no issue about. I'm, I mean, this term is well defined for sure, but uh, it's not what you normally call a transcendence term, I guess. Okay, well, I call it transcendence because it's uh, the A cup of it's similar to A, like SDA, yeah, so. Yeah. So A is not, A is like, 
zero or one, right? Yes. So it's a Z two field, and usually it's a U one. So, so, so if A is discrete, you can you can you can kind of relax that and make it to kind of continuous form. But if it's discrete, how how can you? Yeah. So there's no limit. So we cannot take any limit from our to the this result. Yes. So we have to try this way for whatever we, we want to train Z two to Z n and take and go to infinity depending on U one. But it's not the, a very obvious procedure to see we can get from here to there. If you write this in the continuous as a BF theory, is that literally the transcendence term of one of the U one page fields? Or? Uh, so so the, the question is like we, we don't know how to write on just limit. But for example on a, a, a special lattice, you have this kind of operate. We don't we cannot take from just limit. But I, I don't know how to write down the something happy in, in a confidence field. Yeah. But, but just for the Z2H theory. Yeah. But you just regard the duality, yes. So some low energy field theory duality. Is there some familiar form people you know compared to some continuum field theory duality? Yeah, that's a very good question because so our result here is we don't take IR limit, so it's a, it's so um it's, it's level is index. So and uh, I think their result based on some argument flow, some fixed point, and they have some argument about that. So I don't know how to connect from our approach to their approach. I, I should find a result is very similar. Uh, but I'm not sure if we can prove they are incorrect or not. Mm -hmm. So we have to try it. So there are some hidden sum over spin structure there, right? Uh, yes, uh, yeah. So I didn't mention about it because when we, so if the, uh, if the, uh, Special manifold is not simple, simply connected. There's some extra constraint on fermion identity. So when we try to map from fermion to boson, we need to consider the boundary from the construction of the fermion. So for example, fermion can be periodic, can be anti-periodic. So when we talk about all possibility, the fermion will become the like, toric of the head of both of them. So there's some boundary issue I didn't mention here. So that term, UA, the analogs, transignment, discrete transignment is just a Z2 twist the term yes. from hypercoma to H3, H3, BZ2, U1. Yeah. Is, that, is that like a term double with a twist? Uh, uh, so actually, this, this will have some relation to the one form B2S. Uh, so I will come back some for some SPD, which is also rare on this. But by another, if the trace is the same as trace by you mean, but I will use the letter and I maybe discuss with you. But but I can easily just talk the if you if you if the gate field A is, it is dynamic, so then this I think it's, it's your case then it's just double single term, is that right? I, I don't think so. Really? It's A cup A cup A. A A A cup A D A. A cup A cup A. I don't think of a maybe we can do some detail later. Yeah. And so the next one is that we can go to the 3D. So okay, so I, I think I will give a 3D 3D part. So basically it's like on a 3D, the level and one has uh as part of called broader model. So in this broader model is similar to the 3D version of the Tory code. It has some fermionic excitation, just like the fermion and Tory code. So we define their fermionic excitation running some uh, power matrix, and we find that their power matrix satisfies the same computation of the fermion hardness and fermion purity. So in 3D, we can use layer model to construct our representation. And similarly, no, you can take your time as well. Oh, yeah. You take your time. Yeah. So the idea is that they can define some bosonic hardness, so which has, they have the same algebra. And similarly, there's a constraint on fermion side. If we have the fermion around some closed loop, it equal to one. And this will be equal to some bosonic operate. So the bosonic operate is this kind of uh, operate is like we focus on the, the red side. So uh, on these four edges, the red square, the x are the operate x on this, this red square. And for the z operate, operate, we need to choose the framing. A framing means for each edges, 
with a slightly shift the edge. So for example, the edge one here will be shift to the, the blue, blue one here. And then we focus on the indexation of the framing and the original lattice. For, the, for example, we can check this blue line intersect with the edge three and edge four. So this interaction will let us write down S1 and D3 and D4. And similarly, in this gate function, under, under, under this uh, blue dash line, this is, this is the framing of the red square. So we focus on how this blue dash square intersect with different edges. So we label the edge by the blue dot. Like for example, this will intersect with the edge 10, edge 9, and edge 8. So for every time it intersects, we write down the poly D matrix. Yeah, so this is the gate function of the D matrix. So it turns out to be by this definition, this D matrix is a designate to the format theory. Uh, uh, it's a big equivalency, so they have the same algebra. Now we want to go to translation. So everything just follow a set, the same procedure as before. The only difference is we change the car product to a so-called car one product. So, so the, the quick summary is that in the 2D, we use the car product to capture the anomaly of fermion. So in the 3D, we use the car one product to, check, to capture the anomaly of fermion. So this is true for our So we will. I will write down the format back here. But, but which anomaly you mean? Uh, the, the, the hoof anomaly. But which the hoof anomaly? Uh, so it's like when we try to get the you know, white bone symmetry, the, the white bone symmetry of the half, like the fermion halving, it has some anomaly because they sometimes anti -combine. So we cannot get this, we cannot cover to the background to form field to get the fermion break. Yeah. So it's mixed anomaly between fermion parity and the uh, some one home symmetry. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the one home symmetry I mean is. But no, what was the total now is associated with some global symmetry. Yeah. So the global symmetry here is from parity and. The, the one form, yes, yeah, correct. But the only the only anomalous fact of the symmetry is the one form symmetry. Yes. The, the, the electric one form symmetry. That's the only anomalous thing here. Yeah. So it's like the one form moving a fermion. So this, this move the. Uh, Upper movie and fermion is it's anomalous. So it cannot be engaged. So this is, we, we say it's anomaly. But, but for, for simplicity, you can just take it. When I say anomaly, I mean a fermion that can have some But there is also maybe to hold an army associated to magnetic to hold line or dynamic line? Uh, so this is not our conflict on the region here. Yeah. We, we only say about a fermion, a sharp line. So we can compare the formula. So we can. So here is the two D, and here is the three D. So we can see the formula are almost exactly the same. For example, the halving term here, S E will match to some Poisson halving, and Poisson halving is defined by X times D with some car pattern. And here, the formula halving is across the place because we put the uh, formula at the center of the tetrahedra. And then it moves to the Poisson halving. The polymetry on the face, and it depends on the car product. So basically, if you have a 2D formula, I can do write down a 3D formula directly by increase the dimension by one. So for example, you have V, H V here, you just change the vertex V to H D. And you just change the car product, like V cup F, to found an E cup one T. So you just change the dimension all by one, you get a duality in a higher dimension. We can also check what's the topological term corresponds to this uh, mapping. So in the plus one D, we have the short term is the A cup delta A. And in the three plus one D, it turns out to be the B cup B plus this distance. And this term is of zero squared. And we can write down a general formula. So which term is the zero squared? Uh, so this, this term. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you have a continuum analog of that one? No. In my knowledge. Yeah. I don't just the B here is a D2 field, and I think this is the 
I think even a cardboard product has, doesn't have any continuous analogy. Yeah. The first so means, the first means DHBU. If you just care the uh, Z2 sub sub cost of Z4, yeah. on your new square B Z4, then you take a Z2 sub class, the first time become E way to be inspired, but the second one you don't. Yeah. So but there should be some way of writing the that cup product you uh, cup one as uh, as a difference of uh, cup of ordinary cup products, right? Uh, but uh, you need to sum it over uh, like a cup one B plus B cup one A. Yeah. You can try to manipulate it to sum lower cup product. But in this terms, this term simply it cannot be reduced. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So it turns out to be we can just write down the polarization for the n dimensional uh, space time dimension. So here we define the fermion in the n simplex. We pull a poly matrix on the n minus one simplex, and here is the exact matrix we construct. So in my recent paper, we construct, I construct this map, and I check the detail, for example, the algebra that preserves, the locality that preserves, and the, I check the formula for a stable, uh, stable Wittgenstein class and spin structure. So this argument I said for the 2D and 3D actually applied for the upgrade dimension. And it turns out to be uh, a topological term as this form. So this, this, this term is just simply this term, and you just ch change the, the, this <coughs> co chain to higher dimension, and the top product to the higher top product. So this is the steel row square, steel row square topological term. And this term is kind of important because when Xiao Gang, they try to classify the fermionic SPD, they write down the action with this term, and they claim this is a cost statistic transplantation. So which means, when they write out the, this action, their party function will represent some fermion model. So our approach, we just derive this exactly. So we show that this topological action corresponds to the mapping on the Hamiltonian level. Yeah. But this only works for the Yes. Okay, so. Double with an intentional topological term to the Z2 game theory. Let's say maybe 2 plus 1, 4 plus 1. Uh, you mean the so some symmetry to a Z term? No, it's uh, the topological term, uh, also dynamic term. Like double symmetric term. Well, in any, any R dimensional space time, let's say 2 plus 1, 4 plus 1, there's a cohomology twist to the A. Actually, I haven't tried. You mean the twist is coupled to the Z2 fermion symmetry? No, just Z2 gave you theory A is on top of the term. Because uh, this Z2 actually corresponds to like, somehow similar to gauge union fermion theory here? No, but the Z2 gauge theory here is uh, the trivial class in the homology. Is that right? Is it just a like, torical, Z and torical? Do you consider it to no, say no, it's it's not torical. I mean, in two dimensions, it's torical. But in two dimensions, it's not the torical anymore. It's not higher dimension of torical. It's not BF theory. Is it BF theory? I don't think so. Yeah. So how exactly is this D2? Uh, I, I will discuss it uh, later. Yeah. That's why you said you don't know how to write the computer. Yeah. Yeah, so, I will, okay, so this is the second part of my talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about it. So we want to use this potentiation to construct some fermionic or photonic SPD. So this diagram is proposed by my advisor Anton in two years ago, and uh, Tyler and uh, Stasky they work on the Hamiltonian picture in the two plus one D. So the idea is here. So given some fermionic, fermionic SPD, we can apply our potentiation or fermionation I mentioned in my uh, first half of my talk. Get some photonic shadow. Photonic shadow is some uh, gauge theory. And then we can engage of the higher form symmetry to get some photonic SPT. So by this diagram, we will have some duality within the fermionic SPT and some higher form photonic SPT. So I will try to explain this idea and give you some example of how we do this. So, first, let me remind how do we do the gauge. So consider we are getting a zero form symmetry. So in this case, we put the vertex, uh, put a polymetry on the vertex. 
So on the left axis, there's a degree of freedom at 0 and 1, and there's a total symmetry part of x. So when you kind of split the whole spin from up to down, it's the symmetry. So given the symmetry, when we try to gauge it, we push the degree of freedom on the vertex to the edges. So for example, this is our original configuration. We change to the, after we gauge, we change to the degree of freedom, leaving on thick. So this thing here is a A1 plus A2. So it's this, like you push these two in the center of these edges. And now, if we try to split one spin, for example, if I split A1 here, A1 goes to A1 plus 1, so this one will affect these two edges. So they will also affect another two edges. So the x upright here will be mapped to the poly x on these four edges. So this is the gauge map of the for upright. So similarly, the d upright will be mapped to the d upright on the link. Uh, so the example is here. So consider some IC model. And we, as a weak edge, so this isentense x on the vertex B will become a part of x. But on the right hand side, we still have another it's a gauge symmetry. Because the summing over summing over all this four link will equal to zero. So on the right hand side, we can import this gauge function energetically. So in this mapping, the IC model has the gauge in the digital symmetry, it becomes a toric top. So at the level of one state, the IC model is summing over all configuration in the D basis. So after we take the gauges, get the gamma, so this state is a ground state of torical. The so ground state of torical is the summing over all zero flux configuration. That's a so far uh, nothing special here. But now we move to the one form symmetry. So let me introduce how do we get the one form symmetry. So on the left hand side, we have a system with the symmetry is like Given uh, is in 3D, and uh, given each vertex, we consider a small sphere around its vertex. And this small sphere will intersect with some link, and uh, we apply poly matrix on this link, and we require this equal to one. So this is called one form symmetry because it's in a three dimensional, and our symmetry acting on some two by two dimensional sphere is called dimension one. So this is the definition of one form symmetry. It turns out to be after we get this symmetry by this way. But originally, we have some degree freedom on the edges, and then we push it into a phase. So, for example, on this phase one, two, four, it has three values on the edge. In the center, it's a summing over these three values. So, after this gauge map, the uh, Hilbert space with one form symmetry will do or to the Hilbert space with the gauge symmetry. The gauge symmetry is the uh, Part of the around the one. So this is the duality within these two space. So uh, I will try to show an example of this, this diagram starting from a 2D. So here we starting from some trivial fermion. Trivial fermion, so which means the one stage of the vacuum state of fermion. And then we apply our Poisson map. So we know the fermion energy is the P here, it's meant to the flux time. So we have the flux time here. And we have some gauge constraint called QB. And we impose this QB energetically. So we write down our term minus QB. So in picture, it will become a flux and this gauge constraint. And if we focus on one state, we can multiply this Z on the first upgrade, that's all this one. Because this will not affect constant. So this will give the torical Hamiltonian. So which means the fermion is dual to a torical. So here's a 2D skin. We have trivial fermion. We make to some torical Hamiltonian. And after we engage, the torical becomes trivial item model. So in the 2D, this kind of method is kind of boring. Here we make the trivial fermion to trivial IC model. But this map will become interesting in the 3D. I will discuss now. So in the 3D, with the same start with some vacuum in the Fermion side. You mean 3D space? Yeah, oh yeah, 3D. Yes. So, and then, and the, the 
boson is serious, but it's still a C to get serious. Yes. But the C to get in 3D, what else it could be? Uh, other than BF, there's only probably BB series. Uh, I'm not sure even BB series. I, I don't know if Trumpina's picture, but... I guess BF plus BB. Okay. The BB in your C plus square. Uh, yeah, so the idea is like if you can, so here is a degree of freedom on the edge, this is delta IE, because if we represent delta IE by some B field on some two form, so this change here will become big RB. So in our summary, yeah. Uh, so I would say it's a BB series. Okay. Is there BF10? There, there should be a so in this case, we start from trivial formula, we get a, a bond pair like here. So for a usual photonic particle, there's no side here. But in our case, because there's some formality uh, part here, it may propagate on the uh, GD, so the bond set looks like this one. And we can ungage this, this to get the, the formality, uh, photonic SPD. So we started from trivial formula in the backing, we get some uh, uh, we call it twisty torical bonding, where we get some non trivial one form SPT. And this one form SP is first proposed by Benny Yoshida three years ago. It's recently studied well by the Lockman and Shao in their recent paper. So, so this is a uh, one form D2 SPT, and on the boundary, we can calculate past the symmetry of a boundary. So, uh, so if, if the variable is close, uh, this stays invariant on the symmetry. But if there's a boundary, there's some boundary anomalous symmetry, so we can plug in the symmetry action to see what, what, what's the effect of action on boundary. It turns out to be on boundary, it requires to be this upright equal to 1. So which means on the boundary of this SPD state, we can control the torrent program state, and the bridge is consistent with the result in these two papers. So basically, this is our 2D map we met from trivial fermion to isomatum. And here, we map from trivial fermion to a non-trivial one for SPD, and the one for SPD can have this total code as a boundary. So it's like, we are living in this SPD, and if we go to boundary, we can go to a bottom each other in a low dimension. So it turns out to be, this is true for upper dimension. So we call it a hierarchy of the higher form D2 SPD. So in a D-dimensional, you start with some trivial premium. And after this procedure, you get something called n 2 form D2 SPD. And if you study the boundary of this SPD, it turns out to be the photonic shadow in the n 1 dimension. So we can go from higher dimensional D2 SPD with higher form symmetry to the low, low dimensional SPD. Yeah. And so far, we only focus on the Z2 part. So for example, on fermion, there's no symmetry. And now we, have, we can try to add some symmetry constraint on this model. So for example, if we add a symmetry, so this will become a fermion SPD. And this SPD will map to some for some SPD. Uh, okay, so I don't want to go to the detail of the magnetic formula. The basic idea is for the fermion SPD, this so-called supercomarge data. Based on this supercomarge data, we can construct some co-cycle. So which is a, a co-cycle can construct on bosonic SPT. So we can write down a wave function for a bosonic wave function, and we we can apply our previous map. So for example, given this wave function, we get the Z2 symmetry. It turns out to be that this formula. So U E U is the bosonic copy we defined before. So it turns out to be we can rewrite this this operate. This is the Pauli matrix in terms of fermionic operate. So this state will become some fermionic state. So I will just show you the result. So here's the fermionic wave function we construct. So here's the towards one D result. So we start with some baking state with some trivial Hamiltonian, and then we apply this constant circuit on this vacuum state, and we arrive at the fermionic SPD state in this form. So basically, we can interpret, so the first part here, 
just some hacking. This is uh, it's just some uh, for some like uh, new new part, and this one is the hopping part. The hopping of uh, that is depends on the second data of the uh, uh, supermarket data. So it turns out to be this model has some nice property. So for example, we need to check the company is mentioned under the global situation. And we can show, show that it has a state in law. When we multiply two different circuits, you will get another circuit with uh, another supermarket data. And then we can show that the physical quantity, so different data will give you different physical quantity. So for example, if we calculate a symmetry virtualization on a boundary, it turns out that the different data will have a different result, which means the different data will give a different classical phase. And the final one is the more digital one. So based on Cuban shutdown and we test boundary construction, so they can construct the J boundary on arbitrary uh, 3D for some state. So if we apply their construction uh, on, on a procedure of photonic here, we can map to some state, Fermat state, with the Fermat boundary construction, boundary construction which is also okay. So I will show how we do it later. So, so here's our 2D result, and here's our 3D result. So as you can see, the formula is kind of parallel. It just goes from low dimension to high dimension. And the only difference is here, because in the 3D, we have the Z2 on link, but we put the G symmetry on the vertex. So the symmetry of the modernized SPD is a little different. So the symmetry, the symmetry action acts on the force G, um, but they put the G2 on link. So this is so called two pool structure. Then two pool structure is labeled by some something called three cosine. So in this case, starting from some 3D from SPD, we arise some uh for some two pool SPD. So it, this is the duality between the higher pool for some SPD and the super commodity from SPD. And here is the result how we construct the boundary construction. So, so this part is the original, the form wave function. And on a boundary, we consider the booby tension problem. So given some super command data and given some symmetry group G, we try to extend the distribute by K to get another group G prime, such that this super command data is trivialized by the data for eta Data. And to construct boundary, we need to add some degree of freedom. So we add a K on the vertex and boundary and put the fermion on the boundary face. So on the boundary, we write down a similar theory here. So if we just compare the both part and the boundary part, the formula looks great like the same. So you may say, oh, the boundary is another for nice speed, but it turns out to be not because this is a specificity because the node and n they satisfy the full equation. But in this case, the eta and the beta here, they satisfy this equation. So our so um, boundary is not uh, SPD, it's actually a, a K gauge theory. So for example, when we take a G equal to Z4 times Z2, we can show that we extend this group by Z4, we get some trivialized of the supercomponent data, and we can drop to this boundary state actually a boundary z for H3. So this result is kind of consistent with uh, Tukowski, Hvin, and Max result in their paper. So we have shown that in this symmetry group, there's a D4 K theory boundary conduction, which is K. Okay, so this is the final slide. So in, in my talk, we have shown that in 2D, we can do the organization and which can correct all 2 pb error. And this organization plan will fix the locality and can be generated to arbitrary triangulation in all dimensions. And the conductor requires a spin structure. And we can calculate the space-time action, and then we arrive at a new kind of legs case theory with a uh, topological term of general square. And we can use this organization to construct various Either higher group of science SPT or super commanded from SPT, and also with some gate boundary by Cuban, Shaolin, and Witten. Thanks, that's all.
So, in which sense are this uh, diagram you had the, you know, the duality between the both of the fermions and then you were gauging this uh, higher uh, Yeah, any of this. So, in which way are the two bosonic systems dual? I mean, you're, you're gauging some symmetry. Uh, so, what is the limit of the duality between the bosonic systems? Okay, uh, so I, I should say. Yeah, that's a great statement here. On the left hand side is a uh, Hilbert space H1 is generally operated by the uh, spin on each link and satisfy this symmetry. And this symmetry is called one point symmetry. And this space is dual to the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have a spin in front of face. And they satisfy the gate constraint. It's a part of D around a tetrahedron equal to one. So on this subspace and this subspace, there's a duality between each other by so-called gauging one more symmetry or ungaging one more symmetry. Yeah. So if I st in three in three dimensions, so if I start with the trivial fermion theory, so by this procedure I'll get get a zero gauge theory. So what are the logical operators in this zero uh, gauge theory? Could you so yeah, so logical operator that's just the UE. And a WS. So, so, as uh, if I was, uh, let me try to find it. Yeah, here. So, because um, when you try to get to this bottom uh, shadow, the little gas theory, then you need to set to a constraint, a constraint GV equal to 1. So, the only two invariant operates, the uh, bottom hopping UE, and the flux operate WT. These are the only two logical operates. So, this, up, this logical operate, Correspond to the moving fermion in the fermion theory. Yeah. So you have some membrane operator, membrane-like operators. Uh, like no, it's a, it's a string. Uh, yeah. So WT is a membrane-like, and uh, the moving fermion is string-like. So there is a fermionic string-like operator and a bosonic membrane-like operator. So it's just like uh, gauging like a Z, like um, as like some superconductor. You and you can when you gauge it, you will have fermion. Yeah. Is it like a, right? Uh, you There's that? a paper like by a long time ago saying that if you gauge a superconductor in 3D, then you'll get a Z2 gauge theory. That's probably you get, right? Uh, so I think because our model doesn't depend on the, I mean, our mapping doesn't depend on a specific model. So if you took Yeah, I mean, just for, for trivial case, for the trivial uh -huh. case. Okay. I'm not sure. Julio will be happy about what you have said. Oh, I think he asked uh, what exactly you mean by duality. Okay. Yeah, I understand this operation, but by duality, at least what I understand is I can map observables on one side or the other. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, uh, so here you're saying how to go from one theory to the other by gauging. Uh -huh. But you're saying that the Hilbert spaces are exactly the same? And also operate. So so in, in a one form symmetry, sorry, let me go to that. So in a getting zero form, so this is the mapping between a state, mm -hmm. and here is the mapping between an operator. So in a two form symmetry, in a getting one form symmetry, we can write down a similar similar stuff. Mm -hmm. So for example, the only stuff which commute with a get the one form symmetry, the first is F E. Yeah, sorry, X on F E. This will be mapped to the part of space. So consider Face. So on um, each face, I provide on the x. So the list x on upgrade FD will become the partner of x upgrade on f such that f contains e. So this is one mapping. Another mapping is the uh, uh, so the part of D around a closed loop will commute with this symmetry. So this operate on phase F will simply match with the D at F. So 
this is lamenting between a state, and this is lamenting between an operate. Your list to operate will generate an invariant space under this symmetry. And these two will generate the gated invariant subplane under this symmetry. So the generator is made by this way, but it's a dual edge. I'm sorry about it. Yeah, it's, it's not a duality for low energy field theory. So. Well, I mean, this is all exact. Yeah. Uh, Any more questions? If not, let's thank Sri again. Thank you. Thank you.